Hello viewers of Biotechnica, welcome back again. Today we'll be talking about Matsume International Foundation Research Fellowship in detail. So let's talk about in detail. So what is this MIF fellowship? So this MIF fellowship is actually given to all the PhD graduates who really wanted to do a research for some period of time in Japan. So the application for 2024 will begin in the mid of January 2023. So you can start your process from January 2023 itself. What is going to be the eligibility criteria? So there are some eligibility criteria which is given. So you have to see on to that and then start your application process. The first eligibility criteria is you should not be from Japan or Indians can actually start applying for this fellowship. And you need to have an invitation or acceptation letter from the host institution. Suppose if you want to go and work in a research laboratory for almost uh, some six months, then you can actually apply to the university, then get an acceptation letter from them. And then only you can start applying for this fellowship. Without getting an acceptation letter or invitation letter from the host institution, you will not be able to write or apply for this fellowship. The next criteria is going to be Anybody who are going to be a PhD degree holders can only apply for this fellowship. Suppose if you have completed your PhD degree and you're looking for some postdocs or for some internship programs or for some kind of fellowship, then you can go and join this for almost six months and then you can pursue your research. And the next criteria is age. You have to be below 49 years. So if you're below 49 years, then you can definitely go and apply for this fellowship. And you need to have sufficient English or Japanese language ability. So this is another criteria. Either you have your TOEFL or IELTS, then you can start applying for this fellowship also. And applicants should not have any of the past or current experiences of staying in the Japan. So you should not be working in Japan before. You should not have had your PhD degree in Japan, which means you might have visited for some conferences is okay. But if you, you should not be working over there. So that is another criteria. The next one is going to be, you need to have an occupation in your own country. Suppose if you are Indian, then you need to have your occupation in India only. Then after coming from there, you need to start your job over in India. So these are some of the eligibility criteria for applying for this MIF fellowship. So now the question arises, who can actually apply? So which research field they can apply for. So you can be belonging to either of the natural sciences, any of the natural science like botany, zoology or environmental science or anything, or you can go for any engineering field. Suppose you have done your PhD in engineering of any of the fields, then you can actually apply for this one. Or if you are from medicine, then you can literally go for this. So those who are in any of these research fields, then you can apply for this scholarship or fellowship. What's going to be the fellowship period? It is not going to be a maximum duration of time. The fellowship is going to be very less, which is approximately three to six months. So suppose if you're starting from April uh, or till March, we can say any of the six months you can actually take. So during this period of time, any of the six months you can actually take this fellowship. The next is going to be, uh, you have to indicate the length of the stay and it's commencing and ending month in your application. Suppose if you start your application process, you need to say that suppose if you're starting from April 2023 until six months, you're going to stay. So during the application process, please make sure to mention the exact time period that you'll be staying in Japan. The next one, that's the example which is given six months you have to mention in your application process. The next one, how much is the number of fellowship that's going to be for this MIA fellowship? It's really going to be competitive, so which you'll be having only 10 fellowships available for 10 candidates, only for six months duration. So suppose if you're waiting for your postdoc or any other thing, you, want, you still have at more some six months to be done, then you can take up this fellowship and it's going to be for only 10 people. The next host institution, what, which host institution do you have to apply to? So they are giving an open choice that you can actually apply to any of the universities, any of the research laboratories or any of the private private in sectors in Japan, anything you can actually apply for. But this is very important. You need to have an acceptation letter or an invitation letter from the university that you're going to work under a laboratory or a university also. Okay, what is going to be the fellowship detail? How much you're going to get during the stipulated period of six months? So you're going to have your monthly allowances that you'll be getting Japanese and you'll be getting of this much for your research activity, also for your living expenses also. The next is arrival fund. Yes, definitely they're going to give you an arrival fund when you're going to reach over there for your travel cost, everything. And the round trip air will also be given. 
transportation round trip economy class of airfares will also be given and insurance will also be given and the most good thing about this fellowship is study tour is actually given so the fellowship to deepen their understanding of japan so they are going to give you a study trip uh, plan also for you so you can actually take up this fellowship okay the next one so how is going to be this application process so the application is not going to be like you go to a website and actually apply it is through uh, the email that you will be applying which means you have to go to the website you have to download the pdf and then fill up the form then you have to submit certain documents and you have to email to this one so application usually takes place through this email application at mifjapan.com org so this is going to be the application one so what are the things you will be requiring you need to submit everything in the form of pdf to this email id and you need to download the application and you have to have your photographs over there almost like past three months photograph should be over there the next important thing the second one is going to be your research plan Yes, you're going to do a research for almost six months. So you need to have your research plan also. So you need to have your content, your purpose of doing a research and what are the methodology that you're going to do and the roadmap you need to have for your research project. And what is the benefit of that research project? You have to bring it to your own country. This is the most important line, actually, I would say, because when you're doing something, uh, what's the benefit that you're going to take through Japan and bring it back to India? So better make sure that you're writing it properly. So this is your research plan. After that, the A and the B should be described in very, very detailed way. This is most important thing. Discussing with the supervisor where you're going to work under. Suppose if you have chosen some host institute, then you have to talk with the supervisor and then accordingly, you just have to make a plan and then you have to submit it over there. So the second important thing is your research plan or your research proposal, we can say. The third one is going to be a soft copy of your publication. We're not asking you many of your publication, at least one of the publication in a reputed journal only one publication but this should be in the form of a pdf and that you intend to conduct in japan that you are wishing to conduct in the japan that soft copy of the application or publication has to be given over there what's the next one definitely going to be your cv this all has to be in the form of pdf so you need to have your cv along with all the list of publication that you actually have so you have to submit your cv also so the next important document is going to be the recommendation letter. You need to have your recommendation letter given from the current home institution where exactly you're working and it should be written in the letterhead. And usually a recommendation letter should have an academic ability of yourself and how much you have achieved and confirm the availability of study leave during your fellowship. So it might be after your PhD, if you have, then you can definitely go for it and then you can join in any of the laboratories working over there. What's the next document that is required? The next document is definitely your transcripts. Soft copy of all your academic transcripts or certificates from your bachelor's, your master's, your PhD, and whichever is available, then you have to submit this in the form of PDF. What's the next document? The next document is definitely an invitation letter. As I prior mentioned that, if you want to go and join in an institute or if you want this fellowship, you need to get an invitation letter or acceptation letter from any of the institute that you're going to work under. So that is important that you have to avail it from the supervisor and from the university. So in order to conclude all these things, what are the documents that you'll be requiring at the time of application and you'll be applying it through the email. The first, as we already said, this application forms will be available where you have to download and fill the form along with your photograph. And the next is your research proposal proposal, your research plan, what are the things that you have to include over there. The next is your soft copy of publication, which is usually one in the form of PDF. And then your CV along with the list of publication included in your CV. The next is going to be a recommendation letter from the current employer that you're actually working. The next is going to be a soft copy and your academic transcripts from your uh, bachelor's, master's and your PhD. The last one is invitation letter from any of the Japan University or research laboratory. In the consultation of your supervisor, you have to submit all these documents. The next question might be coming into our mind. Since it's going to be six months and they're going to give it only for 10 people, how is the scrutiny or the screening process going to be? The screening process and announcement of the results. As I already told you, this application process will take place in uh, mid of January and from April till the next month or next year, uh, March, you can actually apply during any of the six months. 
So it is actually the application will be evaluated by MIF community, definitely. And they'll be actually evaluating your academic values and the degree of perfection of the research project, how well your project is going to be along with your academic things. If these two things stand ahead of everything, then definitely uh, you can definitely get the scholarship or fellowship, we can say. And the result usually will be announced in December. Uh, for now, it is announced in 2022. Maybe in the uh, December period, you will actually have this one. And the MIF, after announcing it, it will be publishing in the website and you will get a grant letter which will be coming to your email. So these are the documents that you'll be requiring and this is going to be the screening process. Suppose if you have done your PhD and waiting for your postdoc or you have still more some amount of time to do a research, then you can definitely take up this MIF fellowship in Japan. I believe that this video is helpful for those who are watching out this video. If you really like this video, please like, share and subscribe to our channel Biotechnica. If you have any more questions about this one, you can actually post your questions in the comment section and we are going to revert back to you. Thank you so much for joining and I'm going to meet you back again with another wonderful video.